If you've ever struggled to use the FMC and autopilot in flight, this video is for you. We'll be picking up from the flight plan in our default FMC tutorial and using that route today to fly this Boeing 747-400, the default laminar. Welcome to Flight Brothers FT, produced by Tim and Lee. Plan the flight and fly the plan. All charts courtesy of Navigraph Charts, not to be used for real-world navigation. Be sure to subscribe and explore the rest of the channel for high-quality aviation content and entertainment. Included in today's video, we will have the basic takeoff procedures for the 747, using the autopilot in conjunction with the FMC, some flight level changes moving up uh, for a step climb and back down, and of course various errors because I'm just a sim pilot like you, and I make a lot of mistakes. All right, so here we are. We are holding short at KSFO. First, we're going to dial up the ATIS. You can see 118.5. Main thing we want to make sure we have in here is the altimeter setting, which you can see there in the primary flight display underneath our altimeter tape, and that checks. You can also see the First officers, which we want those to match. All right, so let's turn off the ATIS. We need our flight directors on the left and right hand switches, right up here in the MCP, the mode control panel. You can see our speed is set to 200, which should be V2 plus 20. This ship doesn't calculate V2, so we're just kind of ballparking it. Oh, I guess I'm ballparking it to 175. All right, and we've got the uh, auto throttle. We're gonna need that on. That just allows the system to actually operate the throttle. This didn't actually start the autopilot controlling anything. Okay, you can see our Navigraph charts there. We're gonna make our runway heading match. If you don't have Navigraph, uh, you can ballpark it. Runway 28 would be approximately a heading of 280. Those are usually rounded off. You can see from the Navigraph, this is actually 284. Right, let's get that transponder set. Again, we're using XPDR because the TARA, the switch doesn't actually go that far. I'm not flying in an online environment with anyone else, so I'm just kind of picking my own number. I'm gonna set the auto brakes RTO for reject takeoff. Gotta bing the cabin, because that's my favorite sound. I do have an add-on sound pack, which is why uh, mine actually makes that sound. I believe the default doesn't on its own. Let's get our exterior lights, and there's no shortage of those in the Boeing 747. Nope, oh, looks like we left, uh, we left the APU on the hook there. Got the recirks and the heat on. Engines are already running. This is not the startup checklist, it's just pre-departure. Should have turned on the engines to continuous ignition, just uh, so it's sort of a safety precaution against engine out. There's that route that we had programmed in the default FMC tutorial video, and we've got that plugged in today. If you need to jump back, we will provide the link you can see how to get that into the FMC. But right now we just checked while we were uh, looking at that route string that the approach is clear. And uh, I happen to know there's not gonna be any live traffic because I have that plug in turned off. So next thing to do, we are lining up here for runway 28. 747 is a very long aircraft, so On it takes some getting two, used to eight, figuring out five. exactly how to swing that turn. And usually when you're lined up, you'll notice that center line kind of comes down uh, from the pilot's perspective, just above 
the uh, PFD, the primary flight display. And that's not the worst lineup I've ever done. You can see our flaps are extended. Very important. There it is in the ICAST. The flaps are set to the takeoff position I have selected. Degrees with the handle, we're at flaps 10. Check that our trim, you can see we're not really in the green right now. So I'm gonna run that down closer to the green band. Again, that's one of the things the default's not great about. We don't have that calculated for us. On runway, two, eight, right. On runway, okay, two, we are, eight, oddly right. enough, going to have calculated V-speeds, but they will appear on the speed tape. And by the time we can see them, we're already going to be on our takeoff roll. So it's not a great time to read the microscopic font that we have here. But I just wanted you to know it is there, and uh, you can hit pause if you really want a chance to check it. Right. There we go. So we're going to need to stabilize our engines. We're going to run up to about 60 to 70 percent. That's just in case one of our engines was older and took a little more time to get up there. We don't want any asymmetrical thrust. From 60 up to uh, full power, I guess that's not really a factor, which is why you stabilize uh, at that lower power setting and then don't have to worry about it after that. Okay, our flight mode enunciator shows Toga. It's not uh, really active yet. All right, here comes those V speeds. You can see them on there, they're tiny. One, so this all happens very quickly. We are rotating, coming up to about 10 to 15 degrees nose up, watching for positive rate on the VSI. When we have positive rate, we can gear up. We start cleaning up the ship. We're gonna watch that speed tape so we don't overspeed the flaps. Crossing 800 now, we can select LNAV as a roll mode. Then crossing 1000, we're gonna select VNAV, a pitch mode. Okay, we've, we've paused time here so that you can actually check that out. You can see the modes there. The little box around it, uh, it kind of means it's, uh, I believe, activated. It's like something is coming up. We haven't fully locked into that yet. So you'll see that when we're uh, climbing to altitude as well. All right, now we're hitting CMD. So that has actually engaged the autopilot. There we go, flight mode enunciator shows autopilot in command. We've switched from the FD flight director mode to CMD command mode. So at this point, the aircraft is in control of itself. All right, so we're gonna finish cleaning up those flaps. on the iCast, the gear handle, this is, you know, it's a default, it won't really care, but uh, if you toggle that with like the G key, for, for say, or maybe if you have an external peripheral, you're going to need to use your mouse to drag it to the center off position. Alright, so we've cut some time out, we're crossing 10,000 feet, we need to notify the crew, uh, you can hear this as a passenger, the bong at 10,000. We can also turn off our landing lights, and that is the end of our speed limit, the 250 knots below 10,000 speed restriction. There we go. So to toggle that chime, it pings the crew, they can start with their cabin work. Get those external lights off, uh, wing and logo as required. You know, if it's nighttime, you can leave it on if you want to see it. It's kind of up to you. And you can see those center tanks have gone dry, so hence the pressure warning. So we turn off those pumps so we don't burn them out. All 
right, let's check in with our Navigraph charts to see how we are doing with this departure plate. Hmm, you can see we're not really holding that turn as tight as, uh, as we should be. Quite honestly, it's probably because we are going too fast, and so we can't turn as tight. There you go, well over the uh, brief to 230 knots, so we just don't have that turn radius there. So next we're watching for our transition altitude, that's 18,000 feet in the United States. We can hit the STD, the standard button, going to standard pressure, 29.92. We'll repeat that for the first officer so that they match. All right, let's pull up the FMC plan. And we've got a few other things to check out here. We are approaching flight level 280, which is 28,000 feet. You'll notice on the mode control panel, it's gonna switch automatically from indicated airspeed to a Mach number, in this case, 0.74. That all happens for us, and you'll see it in the primary flight display reflected there as well. Now we're going to come back to the plan here in a moment because you might have noticed something on the map is not right. But we are approaching our cruise flight level, so we can expect to level off. You'll notice the mode's going to change there in the enunciator. Switching over to VNAV out for an altitude hold from a speed hold. And you'll also notice the auto throttles are going to start moving. As we level off, we won't need climb power. So they're just going to adjust to hold our airspeed and maintain our altitude. You'll notice we've increased our speed now. We're going to cruise at Mach 0 0.80. All right, so here we are. We are on the cruise page. You can see the 0 0.80 is the target speed. The throttles are coming back and see them handled automatically. Wonderful thing that auto throttle is. It's a, quite a lot of work if you fly like the uh, FlyJ 727 and have to manage that manually. So at this point I want to handle a step climb or really any altitude change. Uh, as the ship lightens you can expect you would climb up higher once uh, it's capable of doing so and maintaining speed. So first pull up the FMC. We're going to go to that cruise CRZ page, type in our new flight level, 390, hit the soft key beside the flight level. You see it populates. The target in the primary flight display has changed. Or no, we want it to change, sorry. We are adjusting it in the mode control panel, and that changes it. There it is in the PFD. So they all match, and at this point, we're ready to engage flight level change, which a lot of people call felch. So once we've hit that FLCH, you can see the mode has changed back to VNAV speed. And we are climbing. The throttles are responding as necessary to make this happen. You'll notice all the uh, targets in the legs page have automatically updated for our new cruise altitude. And again, this is something you can really expect on a long haul flight with a big heavy bird like a 747. You really are going to have a step climb to uh, handle somewhere. There we go. You can see it's slowing because we're leveling off. There's our new altitude. Oh my, look at the distance to uh, Waypoint Port. <laughs> Okay, so we've missed that waypoint uh, a while ago. It was four miles, then it was five miles, and now, what? oh geez, we are way off. And notice there's no magenta line. Uh, the course line is almost completely off the map. So we're going to figure out how to do a direct to, and then I'll tell you why we missed that waypoint in the first place. Uh, actually, I can tell you right now. We were just too fast coming out the gate, and as a result, the ship couldn't turn fast enough to hit the waypoint, and now it's just lost. So here we are, we hit the direct intercept button, and you can see that little uh, arrow comes up. So we click Lotion, which is the next waypoint. We're going to skip the one that we didn't hit. We click it in beside the arrow, it populates, we hit Execute, and then boom, we've got a magenta line. That magenta line is not connecting waypoint port to Lotion anymore, it's from our current location to Lotion. 
this isn't really a great procedure for flying ATC because we are massively off course. But, um, you know, just being practical, there's going to be times you need to do something like this in the sim environment. So it's good to know where that is. All right, let's step climb back down uh, just so you can see how we can do it in reverse. And, and you can manage some of your descent in the same way here. Just do the same things we did before. Go to the cruise page, update it. In the mode control panel, change the setting back down to your new altitude. And when you're ready, we're going to use flight level change again. There it is. And let's talk about what flight level change is doing. It is going to maintain airspeed to change altitude. And it does uh, allow you to set targets. And then it goes back to altitude hold. All very important things, because we could do this with VS. But then you would need to know what the logical speed is. And uh, you might need to adjust the throttle or let the auto throttle handle it for you. And if you were climbing, it can be very dangerous because uh, you can, might be able to climb at a low altitude at many thousand uh, feet per minute. But once you're at a higher altitude, you need a much shallower climb because of the limited air. So it's just a lot safer to use felch and the aircraft is going to handle pretty much everything for you. The only thing you don't want to be surprised by is it will descend by pulling the throttles completely back to idle. You can see now that we've hit our target, the throttles are coming back up. But um, that's really the safest way to do it. So we've gotten you prepped, we got you in the air, we have gone through uh, the plan and how to fix it when you screw up in the plan with Direct 2. We've step climbed up and step climbed down. Uh, beyond this, the only thing really left to do is do the descent and arrival, and that's going to need to be a third video. So until next time, remember, plan the flight and fly the plan. If you enjoy this content, consider buying us a coffee to show your support. Visit us at buymeacoffee.com slash flightbrosft or search for us from the menu if you'd like to contribute. A link will be provided in the video description below.